thank you very much for your patience. Now, here we would like to start the break, breakout session, which is uh, uh, about the visions of the economy, wealth or well-being, a look at development, growth and sustainability. That is the theme of this breakout session. The facilitator for this breakout session is um, Professor of Faculty of Policy Management, Keio University, Ms. Makiko Nakamuro. Nakamuro-san, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you for being with us this breakout session. As we discussed at the outset, we'll talk about the vision for the economy, wealth or well-being, a look at development, growth and sustainability. This is a theme of today's discussion at this breakout session. And at the uh, earlier breakout session, I'm not really sure how many of you have attended that session, but uh, at the uh, first session, I talked about Bhutan, and the uh, Bhutan uh, journey was attended by, uh, coincidentally, by Abisan as well. It was a quite shocking journey, wasn't it? Because it's uh, Bhutan is a totally different country from other countries, uh, religion, is deeply rooted in the country, and you don't have any addresses there, and there are no traffic lights. Nothing modern is barely what you see um, in Bhutan. But on the other hand, people's uh, uh, affluence or the happiness indicator, I think, um, within the country that is already uh, assured in Bhutan, I thought that uh, everybody uh, in Bhutan considered themselves as happy. So that's the lifestyle in Bhutan. But compared uh, with peop uh, people like us living in Japan, you don't have address, you don't have any ownership, gives you anxiety that you don't have access to Amazon service, and you wonder how it is like there. But um, many Japanese people, when they visit uh, Bhutan, they feel like uh, it doesn't, they don't mind they are living in Bhutan. That's what I hear a lot. So that was an eye-opener for myself. That was quite a, a fresh uh, a surprise to me. That's, of course, a simple comparison is always difficult, but um, right now, within us, how to realize growth in the future uh, is one question that we continue to address, but how to achieve sustainability is also a very important theme that we have to tackle. So uh, today, we have invited three guests, and uh, each of them um, I would like to hear uh, the issues that they see on this theme. So I would like to ask them to share their thoughts with us. So um, uh, as part of their self-introduction, I would like to ask them their views. Mr. Abe-san, can you kick off, please? Hello, uh, this is Abe. I, my name is uh, uh, <coughs> Abe from Ridi Lover. Um, I was uh, uh, together with Nakamuro-san in Bhutan, and I thought Bhutan was a difficult country in that uh, happiness is the goal of their livelihood there. But how do you measure uh, happiness in terms of uh, quantitatively? And the uh, numbers are quite uh, uh, cruel. If you want to put something into uh, numbers, there are uh, uh, things that are cannot be expressed by numbers and that are taken off. But um, when you have a large uh, uh, um, picture, you always have to have a common language of numbers. Otherwise, you won't be able to communicate with other people. So in society, um, of course, there's a difference between digital and analog, but uh, what should be the common ground and uh, uh, quantify things in numbers is very important, I thought. So my uh, responsibility is to find out many social challenges and share them with other people so that people can know, can know and uh, lead to resolution. But that in itself, the social challenges I, I said that I found them, but in reality, social challenges are not there from the beginning. It's just about somebody's trouble. It's an individual uh, 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 anxiety uh, that uh, the people are finding, finding, un finding in unease about, and uh, we just uh, uh, try to f identify them and, and have many people experience this so that uh, we can achieve a consensus whether to solve them as a society. So because we are able to have a consensus, we are able to gather resources and lead to resolution. So this is always fluid. It's, there's always liquidity there. So it's about a mechanism of a consensus building in society, I believe. So uh, in my flip, um, maybe the audience, I, the, I, I was mentioned that I should uh, try to raise the issue here without uh, paying too, uh, attention to the uh, level of understanding audiences. So I think this is the point that I think uh, we are converging to. So um, the definition, uh, when you define something, there's always individual versus group. So what is the interaction between them and how to optimize the interaction is the question here. So. Cancer, cancer uh, uh, cells, 
cancer cells make cancer. And there are also active cells and inactive cells in the latest uh, medicine, medical treatment. You just have to take care of the active uh, cancer cells. You don't have to eliminate all uh, cancer cells. Also, when you have a bad teeth, uh, <clears throat> of course, uh, uh, your teeth damages could also uh, spread. But if it's not uh, progressing so much, uh, you, should, you should not take any uh, measures. That's uh, the recent thinking of uh, uh, dental uh, treatment. So then when it comes to cancer cells, the only the active ones should be taken care for, take care of. And why is that particular cell um, uh, active? Maybe let's say that all the people here are cells and uh, there's only one people who are uh, talking actively and you just have to make that person shut up and then everything will calm down. So you, you don't have to calm down the en entire room. You just have to take care and uh, beat this active cell. And the other way around also uh, is also there. If all the other si uh, cells are too quiet, then you have to make all them active and what kind of stimulus is needed in order to activate the uh, interaction. So... Um, in the human society, economy was about a transaction between the cells. That was a protocol. So uh, in this protocol, the entire group, if you live up to that, you are able to make uh, uh, an affluent society for the entire group. And then that, there was a consensus there. So that was the rule of economy. But, um, but nowadays, the um, rules of economy is not making people affluent. So how to be, have an independent decision by each individual uh, entity is the question, and the communication protocol to have an active inter intervention by each people is uh, the rule of economy, but the current protocol is insufficient to function very well, so we, have to, we need to have some updating of, and how should we update that? Well, in a short near-term view, I think there are some clear things. Uh, one is the uh, social outcome. Uh, quantify that and incorporate them and then uh, change them into um, monetary value. For example, um, today in... Uh, money, you exchange money. If I wanted to buy a cookie from you, I just have to pay the money. Um, and that's the reason why uh, money was uh, uh, developed. There was uh, brokering there, but uh, the communication, so the media, uh, the coins were the um, media, but I think it's quite difficult. It, what is different is that is the uh, collection of taxes. Taxes are collected forcibly based on uh, forces. So tax is a totally different market. Tax in a democratic process, who were convinced? Were well, the people all convinced about uh, being receiving or being collected tax? In this environment, maybe tax money is used for nursing care or also for welfare and also for poverty countermeasures. But uh, the tax market in the beginning was not assumed for uh, in the use of money. So. Therefore, this becomes inefficient and becomes cheaper. So how to renovate that? Uh, that is a social challenge. When there is a social challenge, uh, what is the necessary changes? That is the social outcome. You have to de define that. And based on the social outcome um, and reverse engineer, you uh, calculate and allocate the tax money that is appropriate to be used for that purpose. If you can do that, I think things will change dramatically, I think. All right. Thank you very much for that. My, the second speaker, I would like to invite the second speaker, uh, Professor Togo. Hello, how do you do? I am uh, Togo from the uh, Musashi uh, University. My name is Ken Togo. I am not really accustomed to this kind of uh, opportunity, so I was also indicated and uh, instructed to uh, put up a keyword, so I wrote this word here. Uh, economic system with two arrows uh, uh, in two directions between people economic system and people in between there's two direction of arrows so we talked about the uh, the theme was the uh, <clears throat> development a look at the uh, de development and good uh, growth and sustainability so uh, maybe you have an Im image that the economic system has a uh, unidirectional but of course uh, people are also affecting the economic system quite significantly so there's two directional uh, forces there and also in the a uh, <coughs> The developmental uh, economics, which is part of macroeconomics, I have been exploring this uh, uh, study and uh, the growth uh, factor analysis, that's one part of the study. And we have, uh, from the 1990s, uh, the factors driving the growth has been explored, such as if you uh, protect the uh, 
asset rights, the development countries can drive growth. That's one factor. And also corruption. If the corruption is uh, limited, growth can be driven. That's one analysis as well. But economics is a very difficult uh, uh, area of study. And there are some insufficiency in statistics. And if there's a statistics insufficiency, uh, the outcome cannot be trusted. Oh. And as a result, there is nothing that is decisive, and that is my uh, understanding. On the other hand, there is also emphasis on human assets, and human assets is a driver of economic growth. And I support this uh, argument, and so, so much so for economics. And I am also involved in accounting economics, or rather developmental economics. You have, I heard that uh, you have gone to Bhutan. And there's a country uh, called Botswana that I visited. I'm sure that not many uh, know of Botswana. The income per capita is about 18,500, just a little bit lower than uh, Thailand. It is also referred to as a miracle of Africa and has uh, grown substantially and has grown on the back of diamonds. And when diamonds are mined, oftentimes there is internal conflict. And uh, we can see the evolving into blood diamond. However, Botswana never entered into that pitfall. And the first president, Sadhguru Karma, from the uh, diamonds that have been mined from their own tribe, has uh, contributed to, to the national coffers. And of course, uh, when there are diamonds that are mined from various uh, tribes, this will also be contributed to national coffers. And uh, this will be used for, say, uh, education and also health care, which are provided free of charge to all of the uh, national residents. And everyone is happy. And there were expectations that economic growth can be uh, achieved in this manner. I wanted to touch upon this topic. Thank you very much. We heard about Botswana, and our last guest is joining us from Kenya. Artist Mr. Nagasaka is with us, and hello to you. Uh, by the way, I'm in Ghana. Uh, pardon me. <laughs> from Ghana, he is joining us. I'm not sure as to what the atmosphere is in the hall. Well, it's really, really animated, and everyone's really talking. And just the opposite of uh, uh, capitalism, um, I, if that's an appropriate way of saying this, I'm in the slum area in Ghana that I'm currently at. And I've stepped in. And the overtaking uh, capitalism, and we need to fine tune on this adjustment to capitalism that has gone too far. And nearby, I'm uh, borrowing a bed and bath, breakfast, in the slums, and their Vodafone has uh, installed a uh, base tower. And now I'm able to uh, enter, engage in an online meeting smoothly. It just tells us how, how uh, technology has also entered into the slum area in the Cold War, lifeline, um, water especially. Uh, will not be there. However, but with this type of technology, the airways uh, can uh, reach all corners, and this uh, uh, ties into sustainability as well as uh, well-being. It will be a, a substantial contributor. And this is an art piece. And by the way, I'm, I am an artist. I have ta spoken just about a, a capitalism that has gone too far in Ghana. I, I talked about one thousand. You talked about eighteen thousand five hundred in Botswana, but here in Ghana, only five thousand per month. The economic level is very uh, low, and uh, this is how they earn their living. Five years ago, when I visited this area, they were not able to uh, afford a, a gas mask, and they would uh, in their lives at about thirty. This is a sign of uh, capitalism that has gone too far. I felt that I needed to do something about this, and with this on the ground, beneath the ground. There's plastic a fragment that they do not even use that has been used for our piece and then it will be sold into the advanced nations. And this will allow the waste to be reduced. We'll also be able to pinpoint the issues on hand. And also collectors in the advanced nations, the capitalist nations, will be able to purchase uh, this art piece and this will uh, keep the economy going. And this is the next stage of uh, capitalism. 
And that is what I have uh, consistently, consistently uh, communicated in the past two years under COVID-19. I've not been able to make my way to Ghana uh, for the first time in two years. I have made my way here. And the, uh, there has been about 1 billion yen worth of art piece that I've been able to sell. But this is not going to enter into my pockets. But it will be used for startup. I'm conducting a capital procurement right now, financing. And with this, a recycling factory uh, is to be uh, installed. I am uh, here to sign a contract to purchase a vast piece of land here. So it's about action where technology has made advances and we're trying to decarbonize and we need to do something about this. We're at a crossroad. And I'm raising my questions about capitalism. When did it start? From the primeval areas, this is started when mankind has lit fire. And lighting fire means the dried wood. When you burn it, it will burn very, very rapidly. Vegetables over the 10 or 20 years, carbon that has been compacted is converted into energy, burned into energy. And this is indeed the uh, benefit, the blessing of nature. However, uh, we have uh, depleted this. In the half a century, we have uh, used oil products and we have uh, uh, developed. And this is what our culture is all about. And we have uh, naturally uh, contributed to this absolute culture. But at the same time, we have lost something that is very valuable. And this has uh, started from the very beginnings of lighting uh, the fire. And this has led to the emission of carbon dioxide, which has raised the temperature uh, worldwide. And of course, uh, this has invited climate change. And I believe that it is only up to man who can change this situation. It is also up to us to change this uh, environment for the better. And therefore, I've uh, and decided to adopt this uh, phrase, adjustment to capitalism that has gone too far. Thank you very much. And from this point onwards, I would like to uh, hear from the three speakers. When you think about sustainability, in order to achieve sustainability, what does it take? You talked about redistribution of tax uh, income, and Dr. Togo said that it is important to invest in human capital. And now Sakasa has said that we need to correct the uh, capitalism that has gone too far. And these are key words that have been expressed. But how about the specifics of what needs to be done? If you could offer some ideas. And let's start with you, Abisan. As I mentioned, of course, the social outcome needs to be interpreted. And, and from there, to identify what is uh, valuable in terms of the social aspects and whereas there is a lack of, uh, of economic uh, value. And this is the first step that can be taken, that the first step that must be taken, as a matter of fact. And I believe that there's something else that needs to be done. And when I take this uh, proposal, we think about, of course, uh, uh, about e economics per se. And it was dependent on that perspective. The technology that we have uh, created can be categorized into two. One of it is inward looking, and the other is external. And, when it's, it's, and what is internal? People use internet, and of course, uh, there's a distribution of this, uh, of course, this meeting. And this applies to TV as well. And also uh, boarding the plane uh, to meet someone far away or otherwise uh, exchanging letters. And also monetization, of course, uh, using communication. Uh, that's one way of a uh, communication. So it is an internal communication. And to, to facilitate this communication is uh, this type of technology on the one hand. And then there's the other type of technology. For example, agriculture would be easy to understand. You till the ground uh, to uh, produce rice or vegetables. And external uh, technology is about econ um, the Earth's environment or possibly space. So, so something that is outside of the mankind, what is important. And of course, this applies to, say, weapons as well. And first of all, the weapons were used in order to hunt. And so they can be separated into this internal and external technology. But there is a, a, a system in which there is a, a balance that has been lost. The internal technology is uh, the technology by which uh, we, of course, uh, compensate in order to go midway and in order to allow communication to uh, be sustained. Let's say we send a letter to uh, the other side of the earth, say to Brazil. However, you can do this in five seconds over the internet by chat. And 
this will mean that efficiency will be enhanced by uh, not just several folds, but several tens of thousands of folds. And this will mean that the efficiency of time will also be improved. And also, this will mean that there will be more of a uh, mindset that can be accelerated. Of course, uh, if we're going to send letters back and forth, it will take about one week. But however, today, we're able to do this in, say, five seconds. And even if we have uh, 200 pieces of correspondence, we can do this in one uh, hour, which will mean the efficiency will be enhanced considerably. This also has to do with the economy, with lending and also Borrowing, we need to create create uh, credit, but of course this takes time. And then there's the internal technology, but it's about uh, purchasing uh, time from each other, and by which we will be able to enhance astronomically uh, achieve a development. Well, of course, when it comes to external uh, technology, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's not the same because even if you cultivate the land, you won't be able to produce rice uh, two times, three times a year. So the external needs, this compound factor does, of time does not uh, work. So you cannot change the time. But the inner uh, technology can buy time. And that's the reason why inner technology only uh, develops faster. So when you... Uh, consider who will be the wealthy people. All these wealthy people are related to the inner technology, such as uh, finance, IT. Those are the environment uh, where a lot of uh, wealthy people can emerge and because they can buy time. They can, uh, they can, and they can purchase time. So, but when it comes to the external uh, uh, world, you cannot buy time, no matter what you do. So you have to use the internal technology, finance technology, and of course you may be able to uh, improve the efficiency, but these uh, external technologies for the outside and therefore you won't be able to enjoy the compound factor. So when that's uh, uh, considered, see, of course, you have to attach weighting factor for the external technology. Otherwise, only the internal technology will develop and the external uh, technology will never uh, grow. So the youngsters, I think, have an intrinsic understanding on that. So uh, the Earth environment gone this far uh, with all the mankinds using this internal technology. If this exponentially grows further, the external technology will lag behind significantly. And of course, the external species will go extinct. So that will have like, uh, emer uh, enormous power and outcome of this. So therefore, talk, my other proposal is that these external technologies, how to attach weighting to that and weighting factor to that. Of course, the internal technologies will have to be discounted. Otherwise, it's going to be inadequate. So as Piketty Sen says, that is uh, um, the Capitalism has the compound factor, and therefore you make money based on the compound factor, so you may have to uh, apply a higher tax rate for those people. So I think uh, the technologies are divided into two, internal and external, and uh, you have to attach a more heavier weighting for the external factor so that uh, if you are producing agricultural produces, then the internal uh, technology should... Uh, uh, provide subsidies to those external uh, technologies, for example. That's one important theme that I would like to raise here. Am I okay talking about this kind of subject? Yes. Uh, Nagasaka-san, do you have any comments to Mr. what Mr. Abbasan just mentioned? I just thought that everybody has a similar way of thinking. That gives me a lot of a reassurance and makes me happy. And uh, so internal and external, that's very true because um, now we have this uh, radio tower there and uh, all this only limited number of wealthy people, fund managers are making money. This is a fact. The, the more they do their business, the people working and in the external world will suffer from lower wages because this is a relative factor and relative uh, uh, relationship. So the absolute amount of energy in the uh, earth is limited. So therefore, um, <clears throat> deprivation will happen. So um, up until now, um, CSR, corporate uh, taking responsibility for society, uh, using 1% of their profits for social contribution, that has been a practice undertaken so far. But how to link that with sustainability? I think we have to change the awareness quite significantly. Uh, like Mr. Abesa mentioned, um, mail can uh, be delivered in just an instant uh, instead of uh, letters that will take three, four days. In my personal view, without going to Ghana, over the last two years, I was able to communicate with the people in Ghana uh, through Facebook and talked about the allocation of uh, uh, resources in the factories and uh, um, we worked together with them, and even as an individual, I was able to ra raise funds through fund, uh, cloud funding. So long as you can offer value, uh, without meeting people, you are able to raise funds through these measures. So um, 
in the industrialized, industrialized uh, economies, you don't have to uh, rely on large corporations. I think uh, the activities to bring up the capabilities of individual in investors is going to be very important because in that way we can raise the uh, GDP level and uh, lead the industrialized economies. So the external community, of course, certainly, physically speaking, you have to uh, <clears throat> uh, reap the crop uh, after spending one year of uh, <clears throat> raising the uh, produces, agricultural produces. But unless you use this economic cap, uh, things are not viable. But what I'm trying to do is like the recycling factory case, I'm trying to do agriculture business in Africa. I have this concept called smart village concept. And right now, from one seed, 10 times fruits can be uh, uh, reaped out of that. This technology is already established. So Ghana, our wage level is quite low. So if I do this in this wage, low wage environment in Ghana, you'll be able to uh, enjoy 10 times as many crops and use that uh, proceeds for the wages uh, improvement in Ghana. So I think I, it is possible to find to the balance between the internal and external world. So uh, coffee beans, olives, all the produces that I'm looking into, I am now working for the selection of the uh, uh, farmland and uh, as Mr. Abe mentioned, how to take strike a balance between external and internal. And um, we have to establish a system whereby the uh, profits will flow to the external world. We have to work on that. But one success that I achieved is that uh, we were able to set the compensation for the external technologies and the external uh, uh, world. The artwork that I just introduced to you is just a waste. But whatever that is happening in the external world are uh, now incorporated in the artwork, and that uh, is given a price, a price of like 15 million yen. We can, I can sell that at that kind of very high level of price. I have established that uh, a mechanism. So, a mechanism for, norm for normalization is something that I have been uh, working on, not really as a uh, entrepreneur but uh, rather as an artist, so that I can um, <clears throat> ring a bell to uh, the uh, people's thinking. And I think this will lead to sustainability in the future. Maybe uh, I have, uh, this may go sideways, but uh, two days ago I went, I met with Prime Minister Kishida and uh, I visited him together with Naoki uh, Inose, the former governor of Tokyo. And Mr. Inose-san insisted that green transformation has to be made an investment. That's what Mr. Inose insisted. Japanese people, when they talk about green transformation, they think it as cost. But Mr. Inosa suggested that it should not be considered as cost. We have to invest for green, and that has to be the driver for growth. That was the point insisted by Inosa san, and I think that was quite understandable. But on the other hand, I, I, this is a question to Abe san and Nagasaka san with COP26, with that uh, uh, claim by Indo India, uh, the um, outcome was a major compromise. And it's always difficult to achieve internal consensus, international consensus. Did you have any opinions about that? Well, I thought, well, uh, green should be made an investment. I think uh, that kind of discussion, as I said, um, you have to understand the economy first, I think, first and foremost. And... Um, Japan for the last 30 years, the major reason why it's failed is because economy and the affluence was mixed together. And affluence, there's a little, many different types of affluence, but when Japan was enjoying high rate of growth, we did not pursue money. I think we were uh, um, aiming for material affluence and the that was the objective. And for that, uh, as a means for that, economic growth was pursued. So um, after all, economy, is uh, for mankind and also for individual. It's just you have a direction that you all would like to realize. And in order to realize that direction, I, I, economy is a very effi efficient and effective uh, means for that. But if you don't have a directional aspiration, it doesn't make sense at all. So uh, if you wanted to go for green economy, econo uh, environment, I think economy is very uh, effective because there's a goal there. So how to link it and how to quantify that quantify what becomes very important. So in that regard, now that the green has become a large market, I think the uh, um, emission rights, for example, applies to that. So 
it, it, it's all about a CO2 measurement. So measurability is the condition for money, and uh, whatever that can be accounted could become a monetary uh, means. So when that is the presumption, we should have this kind of PPM, then you can judge whether that is great or not. And that was securitized. And that is the starting point of the global green market. So uh, it was best we had the green trend has started from this market approach. And in this major trend, um, in the individual uh, <clears throat> Uh, consensus at the political level, of course, uh, as a short-term problem, India's uh, disagreement was a uh, trouble. But I think, but I think we'll see a long-term convergence towards the same direction. So, of course, the time frame is a point of discussion. But when you go to UK, you have this uh, uh, circulatory highway system, and um, people will lie down so that, uh, like a street jack to claim something. The, those protesters are now hijacking the road. The ring uh, uh, streets, of course, uh, you have trouble if you cannot pass by the streets, but uh, they are now uh, <clears throat> blocking the traffic in order to claim uh, and require something to the government. So, like the social apartments to make uh, it more controllable in terms of temperature in order to reduce the emissions. Unless they, uh, the government listens to them, they are occupying the roads. And that is uh, raising controversy in, in the UK. Kids, I think so there needs to be a certain objective, but at the same time, there needs to be improvement in terms of the political system as well. And how will society catch up with the changes in the environment, Earth's environment? Uh, that's uh, cr critical. Uh, in terms of overriding trend, we will go towards the uh, green. And of course, this will also uh, apply to the developing countries as well. However, uh, as far as our greening is concerned, we may not be able to catch up. So it has to do with the bounds and leaps that uh, the politics can make. And in England, also Europe, there are radical protest demonstrations have been conducted. Even in bef it's not about just uh, uh, shouting their assertions in front of the Diet building, but they're ready to block the the loop rules. And in fact, this could mean that lives could be sacrificed, and this has actually uh, happened. And some have sustained injuries for life. And it could be that ambulances could have uh, passed through, but they were not able to do so. But even sacrificing these uh, people. There are such a global uh, campaigns that are being conducted worldwide. So is this going to happen in Japan or not? Well, we need to understand that this is a level by which uh, we need to drive a campaign by which to um, engage in change of the Earth's environment. If I may, it's not as if I want to talk about money matters. But earlier in Mitsugoshi, I had an exhibit. And there was a person who bought an art piece for 120 million yen. And this person has an IT, is a president of an IT company worth 50 billion. And I asked why he made that purchase. And he said, well, you are, you created a new platform for all of us. And spending 200 million to change capitalism. And he has a fought in this world of capitalism and has succeeded himself to the top. However, when it comes to something that is essential in terms of happiness, he said that he has left it behind. And he pondered as to where he will be able to donate in order to better the world. And of course, Elon Musk has said that at United Nations. And he said that if he is able to make a contribution, if that's going to better the world, then he will do so. The 200 million yen art piece handed over to him and receiving, of course, the 200 million, but of course, taxes need to be paid. But then the remainder can be donated or injected into something that's uh, worthwhile. And he said that I have created the platform. He's very grateful. And that single word has value. It is not as if we have developed for the sake of money. And that's not to be denied. And for post-war, we have uh, entered into the high economic growth period. And we have all thought about how to make a better world for the next generation. And those who have come before me have made that vision and have earned their way to create the order for the advanced nations. But how about our generation, the Generation Z, 
we do not have that kind of an objective because Japan has already achieved growth. But within which, because of life, we need to grow. That's an essential condition. And there are billionaires and also investors who are ready to spend. And to put it simply, given the situation, why is it that we need to, Kishida san is talking about uh, investing into the green market? It's very simple because we need to go beyond that. We have the energy that's trapped inside, the excess fat, so to speak, needs to go somewhere. And within the uh, old format of capitalism, there's no way for the money to go. We have ESG investors and various uh, investors who are trying to invest in something that's better for the environment. Otherwise, we will not be able to sustain ourselves. And however, that was something that uh, no one in the past has become aware of. But suddenly, that acknowledgment is there. But we need to instill a sense of urgency. And therefore, within this uh, order of competition, we need to uh, engage in uh, the um, maintenance of the environment and sustainability. I recognize that five years ago, I went to Ghana and I saw the reality of capitalism. And creating this art piece uh, has uh, allowed me to take the lead and as one acknowledgement. And I've uh, come to feel the change. And as Abisan has made and Kishida has made, is to create a new capitalism. And given the state of excessiveness of the capitalism, this will allow us to drive a change. And if we're able to understand this, and the audience who have joined us on this occasion, I'm sure uh, wish to know about this. And as an artist, I think they have uh, stepped forward. The society as a whole needs to compete. And I'm just saying something that's very, very simple. Uh, spending money on cleaning up the world, what's wrong with that? I want to create a society that will compete for that end. And that's something that I certainly can relate to as well. Of, uh, volunteering on the weekends, I understand that it's not going to uh, really produce results. I understand that. And I'm with uh, educational economics. That's my um, specialty. And therefore, I receive a request or consultation from schools. So how is it? How are we able to uh, acquire pro-socialist activities or behavior among the students? I understand that volunteers on weekend is not sustainable. But if you're going to just pursue your own benefit, of course, that's not sustainable. So we have to think about how to engage those around us uh, to create a pro-social behavior and mindset. And I ponder as to how that can uh, occur. And I receive requests for consultation. So as uh, Dr. Kotoko has said, uh, investment into human capital is necessary for sustainability and also growth. Uh, these are key drivers. And I believe that this is a very a crucial perspective. And therefore, I would like to uh, hear more about that from um, Professor Toko, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm, uh, pardon me for keeping my silence. I'm sorry, we have been speaking too much. As uh, Nakamura-san has said, as suggested, but before I go into that, I would just like to speak about, well, from my generation, I'm of the older bunch, and therefore I'm on the side to um, pro protect the existing capitalism. Now, capitalism and also economic growth, the question arises as to whether this can achieve sustainability advances and of course technology will be the key will hold the key uh, environmental issues of course we also have to think about food loss food loss for corporates is also a loss if we're able to eliminate that they will be able to increase their profit levels so if that happens where the freshness is declined the price could be automatically reduced and a discount is applied, well, then this will help to reduce the food loss. And from that perspective, environmental issues uh, is, it can be resolved to a certain extent by technological advances, so I feel. And this is something that I've never voiced in the past, but also, but however, as I read, uh, go through the press, there's Kamikatsu town in Tokushima prefecture. There are 45 uh, categorization and 80% recyclability is already achieved within the same capitalism system that certain town has been able to achieve this 
And is this going to be limited to this uh, particular location, or is it going to spread across uh, the nation to enhance recyclability nationwide? We heard about, uh, of course, a human investment in human capital. We need to conjure the mindset, and if we are able to conjure this mindset, well, what needs to be there? And if we go back to that uh, question, I think uh, education will play a part. When you think about children in Japan engaging in volunteer activities, and however, which is never prolonged, we have to think about how to think of our own on our own and to take action on our own is something that, well, I don't know if this is something that can be taught, but this has not been acquired because, of course, the emphasis has always been to pass the ent entrance examination. If I mean to enhance a pro-social behavior, what can be do? What can be done? We are engaging in, uh, of course, extracurricular activities in uh, Lidi Lover, Ridi Lover rather, and we have uh, visited various uh, sites. For example, where rice is discarded, which is really a pity and waste of resources. And also, we talk uh, we talk with uh, um, drug addicts, and uh, so the children can feel that this is really uh, crucial. There are about 400 or so social themes that are taken up in these extracurricular activities so that we will be able to uh, enhance uh, pro-social behavior. And we found that this has really paid off. So when it comes to social consciousness, especially in the education and, and also for those of you who are joining us today who are uh, uh, adults, uh, when we think about how this can be enhanced, this is something that we have researched and we have taken about 10,000 data to uh, conduct an analysis to see what can be captured. And we have found that there are various uh, activities that have really popped up. So even if you're a child or adult, this social, if you're interested in social issues, if you're willing to do something good for the social society, there's a common characteristics among them, which is, this is a category that I named myself, this is a cross-border uh, experience to uh, acquire this uh, notion of being a minority. These people have a pro-social behavior activity, uh, a tendency. So what this means is that, uh, specifically speaking, if you go abroad and if you are discriminated as an Asian, if you have that experience, you are more pro-social. Pro if you failed an entrance exam and uh, were lonely through that period, if you uh, changed schools and had a, a bad experience, uh, if you go beyond your boundaries and um, as a result of that and become a minority, if you realize that those people have a more pro-social pro behavior, and they have a, a more a stronger interest in the social issues. As a mechanism, I think we can embed this, I think, by having this cross-border ex experience and, uh, and develop this uh, a minority experience, even as a training program as a, in your corporation, I think that will uh, raise the awareness of these people. This is uh, proven by statistics. So just by uh, piling up this kind of practices, I think uh, people are willing to think about the society and they are willing to make the society a better place. So I think this will work. Yes, uh, in terms of psychological uh, analysis, uh, pro-social behavior enha enhancement is always uh, a research theme, and they raise two important priorities. One is to acquire the perspective. Second is to increase the level of resonance. So, Mr. Abe, I think... Um, uh, I think it's not so far away from the uh, traditional theory of psychology. Yes, I agree with that. So as it was mentioned earlier, and I thought that was an interesting point that he raised, even in the economy, um, in the industry, there are some industries who are really easy to capture this kind. Uh, one is art, and also tourism is also the same, like the Kamikatsu town experience you just talked about, building a recycling factory, and uh, people visiting there will... Um, uh, spend money and that will uh, become a tourist uh, a tourism uh, income. So within, within all the many different industry sectors, what is the next important agenda for the mankind? You have to go first and there are some industry who can capture this uh, and one is the journalism, one is art and that uh, one is uh, entertainment and one is edu education. So all these different pieces, um, they have this uh, very uh, strong exploration capability and uh, through art, you ha will have to think that uh, you will question whether it is uh, right for the mankind to burn oil continuously. And that is reflected in the uh, next level of the economic activity. That function is already there. So, yeah. 
There are places where the surplus money flows in, and that is where there's a a next uh, agenda for society. And also what is interesting from my viewpoint is that uh, what is difficult uh, for money is accumulation. Money accumulates. Unless uh, if you're not able to accumulate, you just share with them. If you go to the farmer's uh, place, uh, you you receive a lot of uh, sharing from the farmers because those uh, farm produces will will get rotten uh, unless you share them. So so, uh, as a result of accumulation, you'll be able to obtain assurance. Maybe you have anxiety for the future. If you have that, you try to accumulate. You have to. You try to save money. Why you're saving money is because you have anxiety. In order to uh, eliminate those anxiety, you accumulate money, and the accumulation will lead to a greater divide. So um, the new agenda uh, will be derived from the surpluses. But I think uh, fundamentally, there's a lot of un- anxiety of people. In order to eliminate those anxiety, people accumulate things, and the most easiest uh, to understand example is money. So. Um, that uh, is the difficulty where the economy does not play good for the environment, for the for the earth. Um, Mr. Uh, Togo, you mentioned that you are from the old generation, so you defend capitalism, but do you have any different opinions from that? Well, if you look at the long history, uh, socialism, uh, uh, capitalism, and also... Uh, uh, Communism, but I think uh, what survived was capitalism. So, but when you think about capitalism, there's different formats of capitalism. So, Japanese capitalism is different from though that of France and that, that that of Botswana. So, there's different variants of capitalism, and the market mechanism is well developed. I think so. You use the market def- uh, mechanism to make people happy. I think that's uh, in a nutshell. That is it, and that's unshaken. That will remain unchanged. So, communism basically. <laughs> It's about sharing. What is yours is mine, and also it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just about trying to take uh, from one another, take things from one another, and that does not make a viable uh, a business any longer. But so long as we are able to accumulate money, the divide will uh, expand. So um, how should we take, uh, take this question of divide within the context of economy, uh, uh, capitalism? Well, let's say... <laughs> people who has a lot of money. I don't have so many people, friends around me who has a lot of money, so it's difficult to answer. But let's say people of my age, if you ask the question uh, whether they can buy uh, uh, happiness by money, that's a very de- delicate question. If you, um, <clears throat> if you retire from the company, you may no longer have any friends. There are so many people like that. Or maybe uh, you don't have so many uh, money, but maybe you have a, uh, you're getting along very well with your neighborhood. Which is happy? It's a difficult question to determine, right? So um, maybe money will be a very good tool as an insurance, but then your human relationship may become an asset, and you have your, these different assets. Uh, yes, we talk about monetary capitalism, but maybe social relationship capital capital. It's also a jargon that we use in in economics. Yes, that's a very great suggestion. Like, what is difficult is that um, essentially gap and divide uh, is easily manifested by the monetary differences. But of course, the social relationship uh, capital is also an area where you there's a there could be a very big gap. And in Japan, there are three different types of people. In the case of adults, um, one is the type where you have a constant increase of wages so that you can have expectations of the future, but you have to work hard in the urban centers. Those are one classification. Second one is that you live in the rural areas. You don't have a a significant increase in wages, but you'll be able to have enjoy a great life with your neighbors. And also the third category is that um, the... uh, they have an illusion that you have, uh, you'll be able to enjoy wage hikes at a large corporation, and that's the reason why you came to Tokyo. You abandon your social ties, but still, after coming to Tokyo, you are not able to uh, generate ties. And those are the, uh, the third category of people. And those people are the people who are needed, uh, who needs the strongest support in the social uh, context. So. So when it comes to the accumulation of capital, of course, it's not only about money, but there's also a, a structure whereby the divide can be easily expand uh, in the capital level. Yes, I was the last category, the third category. Yes, so that's a very difficult question. Like uh, for 10 years, 
I was on the street uh, painting uh, uh, pictures and only had uh, 200,000 uh, yen in my savings. My uh, annual income was less than 1 million yen, so I belong to the third category. When we talk about pro-society pro -socii behavior, I, was, uh, I, I wasn't able to uh, earn money. I was not evaluated by society. Still, I went to Ghana, and I wanted to... <laughs> Mr. Ibe said that he wanted to experience a uh, social challenge, but I saw firsthand those uh, social challenges after coming to Ghana. And I realized why I was not able to hang in there in Tokyo. Why I, was, I wasn't really able to um, <clears throat> hang in there because I was not able to um, find the significance of living in society. So even if I, I was able to draw a good picture, there are so many people who can draw a comparable level of picture. So... I thought that I didn't have any recognition that I was participating in society. I often talk about this, but um, if you wanted to shine, you have to put yourself into the darkness because you cannot uh, shine when you are under bright light. So I, I looked at the darkness in Ghana. I wanted to change them and then my function as a human was rebooted there, and the desires of society, I, th I think there are two different uh, uh, desires. One is a, a mental desire, and the second one is material desire. And the material desires, desires are all fulfilled in the uh, industrialized community, I think. My art, artwork, art is all about mentality. It's all about the uh, psychological fulfillment. So I think it was natural that money is flowing into this uh, uh, paradigm. So having uh, pro-social behavior, now that uh, the technology has advanced and the transportation system has advanced, at the DNA level that uh, you're mindful about, there are so many of them around the world. So even if it doesn't make money, I wanted to go to Ghana to visit the slums. And I was able to identify my true objective, my true purpose. And now I have been able to engage in artistic activities. So that was great. That realization within the advances of technology, I've been able to, to specify the technology, materialize on the information that I've held in my, in, in my palm. And that has led to social, uh, pro-social behavior. There's one youth 10 years ago or 20 years ago, when I look at myself, if I were to able to create uh, art piece from, from uh, waste, I would be referred to as a junk artist. However, worldwide, people worldwide are starting to purchase my art piece. And this has been made possible because of the power of technology. And capitalism, is it going to die out? I do not think so. Development and also competition uh, is inherent, not just in humans, but also in dogs and other animals, because these animals want to find, or dogs want to find their way to the most tasty piece of meat. But with pro-social behavior, we are able to try to attempt to create a s capitalism that is uh, more sustainable. And I believe that that is a purpose, the newfound purpose of human beings. From the floor, we will welcome any comments or any questions. From Mori Building. Introduce from Wakamatsu. My name is Ida. Thank you very much. Nakamura-san, you talked about the case of Bhutan. Speak about myself, because of low childbirth, we are finding that the uh, population has uh, decreased. However, it has enabled Bhutan to become more prosperous with uh, lower childbirth. As uh, Professor Toko has said, uh, the ca human capital become more enhanced because there's more investment into a single individual. And this also uh, would pertain to Philippines if uh, the childbirth rate declines. I believe that uh, there will be greater prosperity. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Toko, I'm also in a generation in which I want to defend capitalism. And we think about the downsides of capitalism, which is often said, and there's, uh, of course, the corruption and also the rule of law is not always uh, penetrating all corners of the earth, and this is a problem. 
and as a solution, the, a better human capital investment and also education have been mentioned. And we think about human capital and also education. For 20 years in Japan, a childbirth has not improved. And so we are seeing a leveling off of our populations, and hence uh, we are seeing that human capital investment has not in ha been enhanced. So how can we see an improvement in terms of investment and human capital here in Japan? For if you could cite some model cases or other examples from other countries, that would be very helpful. And also, Nagasaka-san, obviously you have mentioned that uh, n not about the downsides of capitalism, but it's about the rule of law, and that is where the, uh, uh, the problem uh, uh, resides is the impression that I've received, for example, when you cited corruption. And then I would like to start. And now I'm uh, talking about Japan. And of course, I'm teaching at a university. And when I think about education here in Japan, this is a time, point in time which we need to invite a change. Post-war high economic growth has been experienced. And what, is, what was crucial there is to pick up outstanding talent and education was for the purpose of selection. For example, Tokyo University at the apex, and it's a pyramidical order. And for example, when it comes to scoring, 70 and above will be the pool for selection. And therefore, there will be a competition among universities. And then from the university graduates, corporates would engage in competition for the best talent. And education was precisely there in order to identify the outstanding talent. If they are able to pass a very difficult interest examination, they'll be among those that are selected. But that should not be the purpose of education. When you look at Japanese university entrance examination, it's about a multiple choice uh, selection. It's uh, basically based on rote memory. And I have also uh, looked at uh, entrance exams from University of London. And when you look at the nature, it's about uh, having them write an essay. To persuade the listener, uh, logically, uh, one needs to put together a uh, argument, and therefore, this logical argument uh, is necessary. Uh, is that happening uh, in the be before a university? That's really not happening. It's about rote memory, about uh, chronology of history, which is something that you would just forget once you enter university. So it's a, a waste. So there's a lack of logical reasoning. And number two, creativity. And number three, a curiosity. Education, per se, when you do not understand something, it will raise questions about what is happening and then uh, induce one to conduct a search, uh, which will uh, build excitement having understood. And that is the purpose of education. However, that has been missing here in Japan. And this also applies to myself as well. And therefore, it is a high time that we uh, invite a change in education here in Japan. And with that happening, Japan will be able to emerge from this, uh, f from this uh, decline. And I hope that will suffice as a response. And now, Sarsan, please go ahead. Education. As uh, Mr. Togo has uh, said, education is crucial. I felt I. I in, in myself, there was inner denial. However, having listened to you speak, I certainly do agree. It was persuasive. I've, I have always felt that those with better memory uh, is going to be the winner, and there's no uh, opportunity or to uh, resolve issues. There's no social significance. It's about a memory, and that was what I perceived uh, education here in Japan to be. So for these five uh, subjects, all you have to do is to memorize, and then you'll be able to earn scores, is what I felt. 250 students. I was a 249th out of 250 students at school. That was where I was. When that happens, I felt that I was um, an exclusion in society. And I felt that was always stupid. And I have been able to. But of course, I was um, an outstanding student when it comes to uh, creating opportunity for the slum. About It's not about writing an essay, but it's about judgment. And it's also about uh, um, taking action. And if those were included in the evaluation scores here in Japan, I would have been able to go all the way to Tokyo University. But I felt that since that's not there, uh, education here in Japan is not going to uh, be valid. And if I have a child, if, if I become a parent, I figured that it would not uh, 
be fair. However, if everyone had the perspective as uh, Professor Togel has, I think that we're on safe track. It is not as if I'm denying uh, capitalism. In Kampagicho, I was a host, and so everything was about money. That's what I was interested in. That was everything to me. And that was the way to be the competition. However, when you look at capitalism here today, 1,000 years uh, down the road, if it's going to be very, very vulgar, it will be considered as being really vulgar. And where a garbage is considered garbage and has been discarded and it will not be returned to, uh, to soil. It was a very low uh, level of culture is what the future generations would perceive us of to be. And however, there's technology that would uh, decarbonize and in the uh, competition of capitalism, that is what we want to be able to achieve, and where democracy is working, functioning, where everyone can participate. And that is the type of society that I aspire to see as an artist. And we were considered as to be zero, one. However, a creator needs to be able to design, and then we will be able to become a creator in the true sense of the world. And therefore, I pick up my paint, uh, my paintbrush. And then uh, until the garbage is uh, used as a recyclable pallet, I will be able to uh, fulfill my duties. And then we are uh, trying to create a plant. And we will be able to uh, nurture vegetation that will be able to uh, emit oxygen in order to offset carbon dioxide. And therefore, I, it is not as if I'm denying capitalism altogether. And if I, will, if I may uh, comment, and I talked about the interaction between the individual and the masses. And ultimately, I believe that this is what the discussion is all about. And Nagasaka-san has mentioned earlier that and also is a type that will be able to go to Tokyo University. Uh, I have uh, been thrown into the streets because of uh, uh, domestic violence at home. And then uh, I, have I have always believed that Tokyo University did not have to just go through remote uh, rote uh, memory. But what's crucial is information. So uh, try to grab and uh, steal information. If you are able to have information on your fingertips, you'll be able to uh, pass the entrance examination and make it to Tokyo University. I read that uh, manga piece about uh, winning the uh, entrance examination and going into Tokyo University. And if uh, you are able to have an objective, it is important to note that the environment by which uh, you are able to access information is available for certain people, but not available for certain people. Now, you must understand that uh, once you do have the information at your fingertips, you are able to uh, move forward. It is important to have the environmental on environment uh, ready. But if you uh, are complacent, then there's always going to be disparity. We talked about a disparity, uh, not only from uh, uh, capitalism, but our monetary uh, divide, but also about a social divide. It's about information, about opportunities that come along. Is there access that is available? I think that is basically what it's all about. And I think that kind of disparity will become the most controversial issue for the mankind going forward. And also, uh, relating to Mr. Ieda-san's question, um, as I have been repeatedly saying, I'm not uh, denying capitalism at all. What is good about economy is that um, the necessary agenda can be incorporated one after another. And I think uh, it was mentioned that that relates to the law, but I don't think uh, that is the case because in the current uh, e economy, they are trying to uh, incorporate a lot of law. And that's the reason why we talk about ESG investment and governance is considered to be very important, which has to be defined by law and regulations. But unless governance is in place, um, you make it possible, you, you, you won't buy the sh uh, shares of the company. So ESG is only the uh, capital level of all these uh, uh, jargons. So uh, it's about the environment and society and governance, which is close to law. So in the traditional uh, economy, these were the aspects that were not, were not covered. So that's the next agenda. So in order to incorporate the next agenda, what to do about that? And I think uh, that was considered by ESG investment. So in that regard, I think, uh, uh, of course, this relates to legal aspect to some extent, but this is also an element that is already incorporated by the economy and that is already happening. Thank you very much for that. Now, um, of course, uh, we are enjoying a very heated discussion, but uh, we are running out of time. So with this, we would like to close this session. Mr. Nagasaka, at the outset, you talked about uh, um, the fine-tuning of this uh, uh, 
capitalism that has gone too far. And uh, you talk, we talked about uh, investment into human capital and many wide-ranging topics. But uh, for us to achieve a sustainable economy, whatever we can do, I think uh, there are so many things that I think we can do. So that is also... I was able to have a positive uh, uh, feeling as a result of this discussion with all the speakers today. I think uh, this session was quite informative. Thank you very much to all of you. So please give a big round of applause to all the speakers today. Thank you very much indeed. And the uh, <clears throat> facilitator was uh, Ms. Nakamura. Also a big hands for Ms. Nakamura. You were a very great facilitator. Now, um, Mr. Mago Nagasaka, who's joining us from Ghana, will be holding his first ever exhibit. This is Mori Museum? This is Mori Museum in Ueno, so the operators are a little bit different. This is the first ever exhibit. The artwork has used discarded electronic devices. There is also a prayer for world peace. There are diverse art pieces that are on display, that will be on display. There will be new art pieces that will be entering into the portfolio that are created on site. And so this is something for all of us to look forward to. The proceeds will be used towards aid in Ghana. Thank you very much. And we'd like to send a warm round of applause to all of the speakers who have joined us for this session. Thank you very much.